and welcome back to Talk Utah. I am so excited about this next segment. Dr. Earl, also known as Dr. Honest mm -hmm. from Integrated Wellness, which is a wonderful, wonderful facility, took you out into a substance that I feel you're very good at. Oh, wow. No, do seriously, adventures with Dr. Earl. When we do our Dr. Honest adventures, they're always crazy. And this one found me on a farm, knee deep, in some farm stuff, I think that we should just probably take a look. A great metaphor. All right, everybody, I am on another adventure with Dr. Honest, AKA Dr. Earl, one of our favorite guys from Integrated Wellness. And today we are, I don't know, kind of a pile of stuff over there. I guess I better put these boots on. It'll be interesting. Oh, there's a bug, yuck. I think there might be something in the boot. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, oh, I think that might be poo. I have puked while changing a diaper before. So I'm, I'm thinking we're gonna be in some trouble, guys. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, whew. I'm gonna be okay, guys. I'm gonna keep it together for this, I promise. All right, we're ready. I'm gonna just think about cotton candy, things that smell good. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So I found Dr. Honest, AKA Dr. Earl. Where are we? And um, hello, what's happening here? Well, we are gonna talk about some of the origins of your food and talk about where it comes from and how doing little things to make healthy food yeah. makes us healthy. Cause we're standing in a really large pile of some poo. So you're saying our food comes from this? Well, no, but the animals that produce our food do come from this. And one of the key components that we're finding is that if you have healthy cows, then you have healthy food. So we're gonna simplify this. Basically, cows who live in this, which is, which is pretty bad, they get sick because they're living in this, which is full of sick and then what they produce, whether it be milk, whether it be the meat, it is gross. That's exactly right. And then right. what has to happen in order to make it not gross? These extra processes that have to happen, right? Right. And realize that a lot of the same things that keep us happy and healthy, fresh air, um, a clean environment, um, being able to shower, clean off ourselves, etc. Well, cows don't obviously take showers, they don't take baths, uh -huh. but they need to get out into a more clean environment where they can lay down, they can bed down, um, and essentially keep themselves clean. Yeah. Not only that, if you have a cow that's fed hay, grass, mm -hmm. their bacteria count that's in their gut, that's in their digestive system, and then throughout their entire body and also in their poop, essentially the bad bacteria count drops to almost zero. Typical American farms right now that are trying to raise a ton of meat, most of them are kept kind of captive in an environment like this That's correct. for yes. the most part. So they live and breathe and sleep and eat in this right here. Yeah, that's right. And the outcome is that we have to give them antibiotics because they're sick all the time because they're living in E. coli or they have to be pumped more full of proteins because they're not eating naturally and we're trying to speed up their growth, right? Right. Let's take corn for a perfect example. It's subsidized with tax dollars to the point that it's very cheap, sometimes almost free for oh, really? the farmer. Corn is not a natural food source for, for, a cow. for a cow. It's not really healthy. It's not healthy. So that's also contributing to their state after when they are processed and become meat. Yep. So this is why we have such jacked up meat. And then all of these regulations that basically the government has to do to make meat healthy. And the same thing happens with milk. And so that's a great segue as okay. far as it being the perfect thing that happens with milk. Now, because there's so much bacteria um, with the cows in their living environment where they're at all of the time, um, then they have to pasteurize the milk. And pasteurization then uh, we call denature, but it basically, unravels the structure of the proteins, the enzymes, mm -hmm. and those components of the milk that are often the most healthy for us. And so because of that, we drink Franken milk. And if you ever have the chance to see a real fresh glass of milk and put it next to an overly processed glass of milk, you'll really be surprised at the difference. So if we just had like lovely, lovely fields for them to live in, then we wouldn't have to be so worried about antibiotics and the fact that our kids are, you know, 
being affected by all of these horrible things in our food. That's exactly right. All right, well, should, should we go find some happy cows? Let's do that. I think we should. All right, guys, let's go find some happy cows. Wait, wait for me, Dr. Earl. I'm coming. These boots are really big. I would jump. This is where I am today. It's kind of a metaphor for life. All right, I'm just gonna do this. Yeah, where have you been? Thanks, guy. I've kind of been stuck there. So here we are. We're on this beautiful farm. Tell me from a doctor's perspective, patients, what are your patients dealing with because of bad meat? All the antibiotics, all the hormones, what's happening to us as a society, as people? Well, the hormones make it into us. And so we end up having abnormal growths, having diseases that we wouldn't have because those hormones are in our meats. Um, be that hormonal problems of, of female infertility, other kinds of things. Really? Um, different aspects because that meat is laden with hormones and different chemicals. Antibiotic resistance is a huge problem, especially here in the U.S. where we're having to use stronger and stronger antibiotics mm -hmm. or combining antibiotics in order to treat patients. And it's getting to where there are some bacteria that we can't even treat. So now that we're seeing it, I mean, is there hope? Well, there is. What we need to do as consumers is we need to make that choice. Choose with your, choose with your dollars how, how you eat. Make sure you insist on good, healthy meats. You're looking for grass-fed. You're looking for hormone-free. Um, you're looking for those cows that have the opportunity to get out into the environment, keep themselves clean, drop their bacteria count into a nice, healthy, safe level, and really give you then a healthy product to put into your body. All right, well, thanks for unearthing another, another problem, Dr. Honest. What's on the agenda next? Where are you gonna have me? We'll see. Yikes. Can it get worse than poop? Oh yeah. You have a bug on you. <coughs> Yucks. All right, let's go meet some cows. Here, cow, 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 cows. Hi, cows. Want some, want some of this? Want some of this? Oh, you're super cute here. I like your earrings. Do they, do they come in blue? Okay, so I've had a lot of fun on the farm today with Dr. Earl. We've learned about why cows make good meat, good milk, good cheese, and why they don't. So, you know, always a good time with, with Dr. Earl. I look forward to the next one, sort of. Holly, come here, I got something for you. What? Yeah, a little special mix. Weird, he's got a blender. All right, let's go see what that's about. Yeah, all right, bye cows. See ya. All right, I'm coming. All right, what do you got? Something fresh from the farm. Ooh, is it healthy? Absolutely. Ooh, it, it kind of smells musky. Mm -hmm. That's That's meaty. Tastes like berries. I think there's some, some hay in my back of my throat. Oh, that tastes like udder. Well, Holly, great job. And I know, all joking aside, that you were standing in something that probably it was didn't bad. smell so good. It was super hard for me. I have trouble with smells. And, you know, as a... I don't have kids, so I'm not as cognizant of the food I buy, but there's some great alternatives out there. Whole Foods, Sprouts, uh, I think we mentioned another one earlier that's that's great. And these type of markets locally source from very healthy vendors. And they support like the small farmer. I mean, I think that's the whole thing. You need to support the farmers that are trying to do it right. So, and then we can like have it cost effective down the road. If all farmers are doing it at that level and that's what we expect, then, you know, price will eventually come down. It's as consumers, we have to make that be what we demand. And here's the good news. I mean, all joking aside from everything, I think a hundred years ago, we didn't have people who couldn't drink milk or eat wheat or it's not that our bodies have all of a sudden lost the ability Ability to handle this stuff that's been in, in our world for hundreds of years. It's, it's obviously the way these things are being processed. And we've got doctors like Dr. Earl and the great guys at Integrated Wellness that if you're suffering with these allergies or these kind of chronic fatigue or these problems that are probably stemming, especially hormone imbalance and antibiotic resistance, definitely give them a call. They are there to help you. And obviously, as you can see, they're, they're a good time too. They're a lot of fun. And that was a great segment. 
But please, at home, folks, if you let your co-host go out in the field like that, tell her to shower before she comes back to the studio. Oh, dear. <laughs>